Terrors episode, with stories sent in by you, our Microterror listeners. Send in your own story at microterrors.com. Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night, and some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. The Fridge, written by Anthony B., age 7. After school, Tony went to get a snack. But when he went to open the fridge, it wouldn't budge. He noticed that weird black goo was leaking from the fridge door. Tony used all his strength and pulled the door open. The black goo grabbed onto his arm and it started squealing and biting him. Tony tried to get it off, but it held on. After swinging his arm around, the goo finally let go. Tony ran upstairs to his big brother Tyler's room. He opened the door and grabbed Tyler's BB gun. It was full of ammo. Tony ran back downstairs to the fridge. The black goo jumped onto him and it started growing in size. Tony shot the goo with the BB gun. It ran outside to the woods. Tony went outside to follow it and found an army of goo. He ran back home and his parents were there. Tony told his parents everything. They went out to the woods to check it out. But a bear was eating all the goo. The end. The Forbidden House, written by Zainab Ali, age 14. Once there was a girl named Zainab. Zainab! Mom exclaimed. Get in the car, we're going to be late. Today is the day, I thought. I have to be ready and prepared. Zainab and her mom were moving to a new town and had bought a new house. I sat next to the window, shaking my leg. Breathe, Zainab. Breathe. Are you excited about the new house, Zainab? I guess, Mama. I'm a little nervous about this house, though, Zainab says. Mom looked through the rearview mirror. Her eyebrows furrowed. What's wrong? Don't you like the house? Mom asked. Well, the thing is, I wanted to brainstorm about what my room would look like, so I put the address into Google search and found something sinister. The house is haunted, I told my mom. She looked at me through the rearview mirror. You shouldn't believe all of the things you see on the internet, said Mom. But Mom, Zainab said, it was on CNN as well. Zainab, calm down, it can't be that bad. Mom rolled her eyes. Zainab got upset and decided to listen to music. After four hours, they finally made it to the town, a town called Devil Kill Hill Town. I grabbed my suitcase from the car and went up the stairs to the new house. The house was big and black. Mom got the keys out from her bag and unlocked the new house. When Zainab and her mom entered the house, the door closed behind them. Mom and Zainab looked at each other. Don't worry, Zainab, said Mom. I think it was me by accident. It's okay. Calm down. Okay, Mom, if you say so. I decided to go upstairs to check the rooms. I found a big room and decided it was going to be my new room. I sat on a rusty old chair and googled the house again to find more details to convince my mom that something was wrong about this house. As I was searching about this house, 
I found a new news report about the house. The name of this house is called The Devil's House. I froze. No way. As I was going downstairs, I saw a dark figure standing on the side of the door, and the moment I fully turned around, it vanished. What is going on with this house? I ran down to my mom, who was smiling at me, but her smile was sinister. A shiver ran down my spine. Mom, why are you smiling so weirdly? Zainab asked with a questioning tone in her voice. The mom just stood there and said in a deep voice, Oh, Zainab, haven't you noticed this house is on a hill? Oh, no, Zainab had just remembered. Devil Kill Hill Town. The devil's house is on the hill. This is his house. It's a shame, said Zainab's possessed mom. This is my house, and you knew and entered anyway. The devil laughed, and all of a sudden, Zainab's mom fell. Mom! Zainab said, running to her mom. Her mom got up and said, Ha ha, tricked you! The mom smiled evilly, and then Zainab and her mom disappeared. Turns out that the house is the devil's house, and whoever enters the house disappears and is never to be found again. Hungry Horror Hippo, written by Mad Alexander, age 8. Once upon a time, Zack, Alex, and Zeke were playing Hungry Hungry Hippo. Zack said, I'm gonna win. Zeke and Alex both said, no, one of us is going to win. Then lightning struck the house. The boys screamed and ran upstairs and hid under the beds. Suddenly, the storm just stopped. The boys were scared to death, then slowly went downstairs and discovered that the game hippos were gone, just gone, until one of the game hippos just appeared in Zack's face. Larger, fiercer, and alive from the lightning strike, Zack screamed in horror. Since that day, the boys have never been seen again. This has been a special Listener Terrors episode with stories sent in by you, our Micro Terror listeners. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors, Scary Stories for Kids.